Command, starring Richard Anderson, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Captain Brittles. Yes, Sergeant. Here comes Lieutenant Cohill back with the patrols. Yes, I see. And hold the column. Yes, sir. Column, hold. Hold. Hand me my field glasses, Sergeant. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh. Captain Brittles? Well, Mr. Cohill. Uh, here's the best body of grass, sir. This slope, the small run below for water. This is the best bivouac for tonight. Mr. Coro, do you see that rise there to the left behind you across the valley? Uh, yes, sir. What are those shapes lying on that slope? Small herd of buffalo, sir, sleeping, it seems. We didn't go that far. We turned back and we saw them. Well, the wind has shifted a bit. Take a deep breath, Mr. Coro. Yes, sir. Not one anything? No, sir. Take another deep breath, Mr. Coro. Get it in your nostrils and you tell me if what you smell is sleeping buffalo. No, sir. Smells like dead men. And not freshly killed. Lieutenant Grisham and his squad, sir? I imagine so. The men we come to find. We'll make sure after nightfall. And Mr. Coho. Yes, sir. They must have taught you at West Point that accurate observation is a military virtue. I suggest that you cultivate it here. Yes, sir, Captain Burroughs. Yes, sir, Captain Burroughs. No, sir, Captain Burroughs. Of all the officers in the United States Cavalry, why did they have to assign me to him? A handbook soldier. A great, bitter failure of a soldier marking time out here on the plains until he retires. My father wouldn't be guessing. My father would be right over there now to see if those corks are really Gresham and his men. Father would have made sure instead of losing time making this camp. A broken rattle, Sergeant Utterback, it found at noon, showed clearly. Sir, that broken rattle, the Sergeant... Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, ...when we crossed the trace of that Sioux war party at noon today. That could have been the trail of a Cheyenne war party, Lieutenant, or Comanches or Apaches. They all make rattles like that from the ends of Buffalo. Trail. But if they were Sioux, they couldn't be more than 30 miles to the north in the deadline. Sir. They're afraid of ambush, so they'd be camping away from timber and near water. Two hours rest, and we can be at the upper reaches of the river by dawn, sir, ahead of them. Mr. Cohill, I have no orders to be anywhere by dawn or at any other time. My orders are to find Mr. Gresham's patrol, and having found it, return to Fort Stark and report it. But I think I've found it. I'll know as soon as the moon rises and I go over and take a look. Yes, sir. Look at the other side of it, Mr. Cohill. Suppose that war party was Cheyenne, which they might be instead of Sue. They wouldn't be in the deadlands. Cheyennes would head for timber along the lower Mesa Roja. So would Arapahoes, Kiowas, or Comanches. They all bivouac in open timber. And Mr. Coho, they all make rattles out of buffalo toes. Yes, sir. I pass the word to Sergeant on the back that dinner will be at 6.30, but the bugler will not sound calls. Yes, sir. And Mr. Coho, sir, there is no shortcut to the top of the glory heap. So we'll not run all over the west tonight looking for one. If death and battle is a soldier's path to glory, Mr. Gresham and his patrol had found the shortcut. And what we looked upon that night was not glorious. Ten bodies, stripped naked, pin cushioned to the prairie with arrows, their feet and their right hands hacked off. They sold their lives dearly. The empty cartridge cases said that. At least they respected them as fighting men. How's that, Sergeant? Every one of them skinned bald headed so he can cross the shadow waters without trouble. And whoever did it don't want to fight them again. Why? Hands and feet cut off, that's why. They crippled them in case they meet in the hereafter, Sergeant. Yes, Captain. You still think the suit of this? No, sir. Not now, sir. Why not? I made the march from Ben's Ford to Santa Fe with Steve Carney, and I know an Apache arrow when I see one, sir. Even a thousand miles from where they're made. Yes, but that suit trail we crossed this morning, that war party could have brushed with an Apache war party and come by Apache arrows. That uh, no, this job is two days old. It wasn't that Sioux war party. This is Apache war. How do you figure that? 
Mostly because the captain knows it's Apache work, too. What's on the call? Sir, take the crate detail. Yes, sir. Sergeant? Yes, sir. We'll move the company out at 10 tonight. Yes, sir. We'll return to Fort Stark to report this massacre as fast as we can. Yes, sir. So, he's showing me. Makes his lieutenant first grave digger. Confides his plans to his sergeant in exchange for flattery. long to dig in the soft black earth of the plains. And the rocks were nearby to pile upon the still mounds against the hungry muzzles of coyotes. And after, the air was sweeter in the cold moonlight. And the job done in plenty of time for Captain Brittle's evacuation. The commander's prepared to mount, sir. Very good, sir. Captain Brittle's? Yes, Mr. Cole. Excuse me, sir, but... Can't we go after the Indians who did this? Can't we try Mr. to... Mr. Coyle, the United States Cavalry is not out here to fight Indians. We're here to watch them and report on them for the Indian Bureau. We fight only if they attack us. I refer you to the standing orders of the Department of the Platte. They are most explicit on this point. Yes, sir, I know, sir. But Mr. Grisham was a... How do you know that, Lieutenant? Well, I don't know for sure. Of course you don't. But he's dead. And his command, dead and mutilated. We ought to... Father, what, Lieutenant? Avenge him? You disabuse yourself of your classroom problem, Mr. Cohill. Out here we obey orders. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Pass the word, Mount. Yes, sir. Up, guys. Yes. Pass the word, Mount. Pass the word, Mount. Pass the word, Mount. already that day, and who knows how many miles ahead of us tonight. The men are tired. The horses are tired. Hour after hour. Walk 30 minutes. Trot 5 minutes. Dismount and lead 10 minutes. Unbit and graze 15 minutes every hour. Hour after hour. Got a chaw eating the back of mitten, though. Ain't got much. Ah, give me a loan of some. You can get some more to fort tomorrow. Here. Why don't you ever have any, you know? Don't approve of John tobacco. My ma don't, that is. Say, God for mighty. Gettysburg wasn't like this. You won't tell. Oh, sir. There was roads leading to Gettysburg. Hey, mitten dog. Father's back on Cemetery Ridge again. Did he? didn't say that. About <laughs> the only mistake Robert E. Lee ever made. Not to leave Bravo where he found it. <laughs> Just the same. Army was the army in them days. Less than tents. And you got a furlough that was girls, not squaws. Well, if you like it so much, why don't you go back where there is girls? I was swindled. Joined up again because they said they'd be fighting out here. Only fighting I see in western Missouri is on Saturday nights in the barracks. They ain't like the old army. I remember a girl in Richmond... The time I was with Grant when we took Richmond. Prettiest little Virginia Creek of you. Oh, not a bag. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, sir. How did you know the captain thought they were Apaches to kill Mr. Gresham's detail? I've been his first sergeant for a long time. You get to know. I see. Sergeant. Do I get to know? Well, this is a different kind of service out here, sir. My starver up there was saying a minute ago, it ain't any bird. It ain't full dress war. But it's the only kind the captain and me ever served in, sir. Then you get to know it, just like you get to know siege operations or saber charged by company front after you had enough of them. But during the war between the states, didn't then you? Then no, sir. Neither Captain Brittles nor me saw service in the states, sir. While the North and the South were at each other, the West still had to be held. Somebody had to do it. I see. Yes, I see a lot now. In a way, I feel sorry for the captain, sitting a sweaty horse on these endless prairies, while the great words exploded across the country, Vicksburg, Chancellorsville, Antietam, Appomattox, the policeman on the corner while history rolled across Georgia to the sea. 
Five hours on the way now. Less than three hours till dawn. And we're at the north fork of the Platte. A full 20 minutes for watering call. Some of the men lie sleeping where they have dismounted. Others huddle together in the moon shadow of the high bank. She's quietly talking. They're like a bound boy at a husband. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do then? Well, nothing to do except join the army. Any of you boys ever had a lobster? Not me. I ain't never seen one. When I was in the black forest in front of Vicksburg, I had a catfish. Didn't like it. I could sure put away a lobster right now. Hmm. Fresh out of the lobster pot and into the cooking pot. Alive? Sure. That's the only way to cook a lobster. Sure wish I was back in Wisconsin. Hmm. You just be back in the state of Maine, you'd be pining away for buffalo meat. <laughs> True word was never spoken. Some people ain't never satisfied. I ain't never satisfied for a fact. That's how you get someplace in this world, never be satisfied. Sure got you a long way, didn't it? All right, men, fall in. Oh, looks like you can plan on getting even further, Prowler. The captain's getting fidgety again. Oh, well, another day, another dollar. Mm-hmm. Prepare them out, pass the word. Prepare them out, pass the word. Prepare them out. Loud, loud, loud. step forward. Loud, step forward. Major Toyo, riding out of St. Joe to convoy the wagon trains down west on the Oregon Trail. What a figure he must have been on the old frontier. The Missouri River itself was the jumping off place. Killer Toyo, as men had called him. The wide roaming Arapahoes had another name for him. Blue Devil, with eyes in the back of his head. Why, by this time, Father would have cut those Apaches and the coyote meat as they lay sleeping around their smoldering campfire. Mr. Cohill! Mr. Cohill, sir! Huh? Oh, yes, Sergeant. Captain Riddles wants you, sir, at the head of the column. Thank you, Sergeant. Sergeant Outerback said you wanted to see me, sir. Yes, Mr. Cohill, I do. Now, listen carefully. I have Sergeant Sutro ahead of me with a point. You will relieve him with eight men and push forward fast. Yes, sir. You recall the fort across the Red Mesa Wash? Yes, sir. We crossed it yesterday. Exactly. Now, there's a knoll on the east side of the wash, a knoll that is crossed by the trail from the top of the mesa. I remember, sir. Be on that knoll before dawn. Build a bivouac fire as soon as you arrive. You what, sir? Build a fire. I want to know when you get there. But I can send a messenger back to tell you when I arrive. I want everyone else from miles around to know it, too. Build a bivouac fire, a squad fire, no larger. Yes, sir. Should you happen to be attacked, you're to hold that no fighting on foot. Remember, the dawn light works for you, but it can fool you in this country. So you don't shoot until the last possible moment. But I don't understand. You don't have to, Lieutenant. You have your orders. Yes, sir. Move out, Mr. Cohill. You're the fate on my hook. Now wiggle. How come the captain sent us up here to sat here around the top of this little hill? 
He said that with a bait on his hook. Huh? The decoy. That an Indian war party were to draw them out. Better put some bacon to fry, Coffin. Make it look natural. Yes, sir. You mean the Williams may end up like Mr. Gresham and his patrol? There's always that possibility. It ain't a prospect that pleases, sir. That's what a soldier lives for, Saber. To die. Yes, sir. It was a good performance. When he watching Sue or Apache, here was a small white soldier war party. Fire lighted, bacon cooking, horses unsaddled, and warriors sleeping from a long night march. Soft for the killing. Only the warriors weren't sleeping. Beyond the yellow carpet of firelight, they lay fanned out behind their saddles, waiting, sorting the night sounds with straining ears, pushing at the soft wall of darkness with widened eyes. Wish them dead burnt cowardies didn't sound so much like human beings. Well, you can be sure of one thing. No engine is running around in the middle of the night yelling like a coyote. Yeah, but it sure makes me nervous. Sound like who yells? That's only me. What's that? Find it. Don't get in the fret, boys. It's only me. Oh, General Grant, Chief of Staff. You're lucky I didn't put a bullet through you. No, no, you wouldn't do that. The lieutenant said not to fire until commanded. Any of you fellas ever had Indian pudding? No. I had sweet potato pudding when I was with Sherman in Atlanta, but I didn't like it much. Wish you was Napoleon at Waterloo. It's made of cornmeal and molasses. What? Indian pudding. Oh. See any savages yet? No. And don't expect to. Yet. Why? There ain't an Indian west of the Missouri will come out and fight at night if he can help it. So what are we worrying about? Who's worrying? Not me. No. Then you can start worrying. Huh? Listen to them birds. Dawn's coming. You can make up the mesa planter. Sure would like me some Indian pudding for breakfast. Slowly, the light came. First, you could see the outline of the mesa. And down below, the silver of the water in the wash and the shapes of the men. And out across the plain, the feathers of mist in the draws. If it was to come, it would come now. Arrows, we're shooting arrows. What did you expect the Indians? Hold your fire, man. What was that? Hit one of the horses. Here they come. Ah! My leg. Hold your fire. Now hold it. They are Apache. I've got one of the heathens. i got two. Look at them lying yonder. One of them's still wiggling. Oh, fix that. Hold your fire. Yeah, but I was just going to... They'll be back. They'll be back. Yes. Only the beginning. Yes. Where were your head, Coffin? My leg. Mm. Bone shattered. Hurt much? A little, sir. Those arrows are just a little wicked. Go right through them, man, if they don't hit bone. Do tell. No action in the new army, huh, Sarver? Well, it ain't exactly like Gettysburg. Here they come again. Now hold fire. Like better this time. Makes no difference. Hold your fire. We have the ones that did Mr. Gresham in. Look. That one's wearing a corporal shiver. And there's one with a U.S. cattle receiver. Yes, Captain Bill, this I want to know. Most likely having breakfast at the port. Oh, Well, that's okay, old Captain. They'll be back. No, they won't. There's Captain Biddle's now. Attacking from the front. Hey, Charlie. Captain Biddle's got him on the loose. Out of me. Down below the knoll, the remains of the Apaches were streaking for the open plains with Captain Biddle's men overtaking them, cutting them down with thirsty sabers and pestling the ponies as they ran. And then it was quiet. And not an Indian or his pony was left alive. <laughs> Up 
up against the saddle, lighting his pipe. His shattered legs stretched naked and useless to form. The saddle lay where he had fallen, eyes closed, face blue, his hands around the shaft sunk deep in the left side below the ridge. The feathered tip waiting idly at each shallow breath. Can't we do something for him, sir? Huh. Look how deep that arrow is. Right under the heart. Can't cut it out. Can't pull it through. Poor Sarber. He finally saw action. Yeah, I can hear him now telling St. Peter about the time they beat the Apaches under Coil. That's not very funny. No, I guess you're right, Coffin. How's your leg paining you much? Can't feel anything. Lieutenant? Yes, Coffin. Do you think they'll send me back home to get this fixed? You think maybe I'll get to see the state of Maine right soon? Hope so, Coffin. Land of Goshen, no. But you won't get no further than the Army Hospital at Council Bluff. Man, they'll wire you together, slap a plaster on you, and send you right back to fight engine. It was a strange feeling. A mixture of pride and guilt. Watching a man die who I commanded into action. Looking at a shattered leg of another... And then, the company rode back in triumph. I was reporting to Captain Biddle. It seemed like months instead of hours since I had last looked at his tired gray face. Mr. Skull, you did that well. You made do in time. Thank you, sir. Captain, you knew they were Apaches yesterday at sundown. And you knew they were camped on top of the mesa, didn't you, sir? Mr. Goro, accurate observation is a military virtue. Had you pushed forward at that slope yesterday afternoon, you would have found Mr. Gresham not sleeping buffalo. Had your eyes been sharp, you'd have found this between the slope and last night's bivouac. An Apache headband. That's right, and bloodstains. And had you been a plainsman and suspected Apaches, you'd have looked at once for smoke at sundown from the highest ground. In this case, Red Mesa. You had me fooled, sir. I even... The fact part. that Lieutenant, for the record, are these. My patrol, temporarily bivouacked at dawn today, came under a sudden enemy attack. Fortunately, it was able to hold until I arrived with the main body. I understand perfectly well, sir. I'm familiar with departmental orders which allow defensive actions only and expressly forbid attack. And yet they are in direct violation of cavalry tactics, for cavalry is extremely weak on the defensive and can only defend well by attacking. I believe that also is taught at West Point. Captain... I'm terribly sorry for my... Mr. Coyle, never apologize. It is a mark of weakness. There is a captain out here who tried that once to escape an inquiry board. He escaped it. But he will die a captain in spite of his apology. The officer who thought of that could have worked with him, made a soldier out of him. If his humanity had been large enough. Well, Mr. Cohill, I'm going to make a soldier out of you. Uh, you may present my respects to General Cohill when you next write your father. Mr. Cohill, take morning stable. <laughs> Get the complete news first on the CBS Radio Network.